There was something about Chateau Bow Wow that made me uncomfortable from the moment I saw it. Of course, Chester had been uncomfortable from the moment he'd heard we were to be boarded there, while the Monroes, that's Toby and Pete and their parents, went on their summer vacation. As the family station wagon carried us to our new home, Chester let me know exactly how he felt. I know what these places are like. You have to keep your eyes open all the time. A group of strangers thrown together by circumstance. Who knows what might happen? Just remember, Harold, keep your eyes open and your door shut. I think your imagination is running away with you, Chester. Ha! I've read Agatha Christie's sport. Well, I'm sure we'll have a terrific time. We've never gone on a vacation without the Monroes. Just think, we can sleep all we want, run around, lie in the sun. And so the outlook for the rest of the week is heavy rain and thunderstorms. Oh, what I tell you, it's going to rain the whole time. On vacation. Chester, look, we're here. Boy, what a spooky-looking house. What did I tell you? Well, this is the place. Harold and Chester can wait here. Let's go find Dr. Greenbrier and tell him we've arrived. Chester, who do you think is doing all the barking? Oh, just the victims of some fiendish laboratory experiment. Oh, look at that sign. You know what it says? I give up. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here? No, it says Chateau Bawa, a special boarding house for special cats and dogs. Isn't that nice? No. What would be nice is if it said no vacancy. Here come Toby and Pete. Who's that strange-looking fellow with him? I don't know, but if he looks here, we're in trouble. Hey, guys, this is Harrison. He's going to take care of you. We're in trouble. Well, you two are the last of the arrivals for the week. Now we've got a full house. last one working with it, Jill. I know, I know. I just can't remember where I put it. I don't know what's the matter with me lately. I'm so tired from all this work, I can't remember anything. Are you as impressed as I am with the staff, Harold? Everything will be just fine, Mrs. Monroe. You mustn't worry. I'm sure you're right, Dr. Greenbrier. It's just that we didn't know you'd be away. I understand. But I simply must take some time off. Anyway, it isn't as if I were going to be on the other side of the world. I'll be right here in town. Just a phone call away, should any problems arise. I know you have two very special pets here, and believe me, nothing is going to happen to them. This is a special pet? Oh, yes, Harrison. Chester is a very special cat. Most uh, unusual. Isn't that so, Mr. Monroe? Unusual? Yes. I'd say that's just the word for Chester. Okay, their bungalows are ready. I'll take Chester back. Harrison, why don't you take Harold? See you in the netherworld, Harold. Bungalows, Doctor? Bungalows are what we call cages here at Chateau Bow Wow. We think it has more class. Class? Uh-huh. Well, Harold, old boy, have a good vacation. Think of it as an adventure. And remember, Adventures are good for the soul. And keep your eye on Chester, will you? Try to keep him out of trouble. Harrison took me by the collar then and led me away. A tear escaped my eye, and I looked back at the Monroes. Toby was waving sadly. As I stepped through the gate, Chester's words popped into my head. Abandon all hope, he had said. Ye who enter here. Harrison led me to the first bungalow we came to after entering the compound. I was relieved to see that Chester was being housed next door. 
Well, there you go, Harold. I'll see you later. Psst. Harold! Is that you, Chester? Some great place we're stuck in, isn't it? Oh, I don't know, Chester. It isn't so bad in here. I've got a nice carpet on the floor, a couple of rubber bones for chewing. Oh, this is nice. What's nice? My dish. It says Doggy's Din Din on the side. Does your dinner bowl say anything? Chester? I hear you, Harold. Does your food dish say anything? Yes, Harold. It says tuna tonight, kitties. Delight. Oh, that's cute, Chester. Don't you think so? I may throw up. Pardon? Never mind, Harold. Over and over you say the same thing. But do not think just because you are a great big bulldog, Monsieur Max, that you can bully me. I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. You're making a little hello into... A little hello? This kind of little hello, as you call it, I will make into a big au revoir. That's what I will do with this little hello. Is this what they mean by a dog fight, Chester? She's a cute little poodle. Louise, honey? Who's that? I can't see. Can you see, Chester? Just another poodle, Harold. Oh, yes. And now she wants to speak. But, Louise, I've done nothing wrong. Max just said hello to me, that's all. Max is mine. Do you hear me, Scarlett? Mine. Georgette. What? My name is Georgette. Scarlett Georgette. It's all the same to me. You may want him, but he's got my name on his flea collar. Do you hear? Louise, enough. Oh, dear. I do believe Louise has thrown her din din dish against the door. What is it, Chester? What's wrong? S something, something landed on my door. I hate to say it, but I think maybe it was a cat of some kind. Who are you? I'm Lyle. Who are you? I'm Harold. I'm pleased to meet you, Lyle. You're new here, aren't you, Buster? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. We're going over the wall Tuesday. Don't tell the others. Just you and me. Just you and me. Not so loud. The code word is... Oh, no. It's Harrison and Jill. I forget you saw me. I, uh... college like you? Oh, no thanks. I don't have the time. I'm going to make a million bucks and retire by the time I'm 21. All I have to do is think of a way. And believe me, I'm thinking all the time. I'll bet you are. Here's your dinner, Harold. I hope you like it. Okay, everybody, dig in. I'll check on you later. It was much later that night when we first heard it. Chester, did you hear that? We're wolves. Oh, come on, Chester. We're wolves, I tell you. Chateau Bow Wow, my foot. Welcome to Holiday Inn. The next morning, after I finished breakfast and discovered the words, Have a nice day, at the bottom of my food dish. Exercise time, everybody. What's on the agenda today, Harrison? Well, we've got that storage shed to clean. What storage shed? The one out back, right outside the fence near Howard's bungalow. Well, we'd better get at it. 
All right, everybody, enjoy yourself before it starts to rain. Ah, it feels good to be out, doesn't it, Chester? See, this isn't so bad. Oh, yeah? Look who's coming our way. Oh, that bulldog we heard last night. What was his name again? Max. With that natty turtleneck sweater and those square shoulders and jaws, he looks like the captain of a football team, doesn't he? If he says anything athletic, I'll scream. Hi, fellas. You want a jog? Yeah! I'm Max. I'm Harold. And this, uh, that was Chester. Oh, pleased to meet you. So you want a jog, Harold? You have to get your exercise when you can around here. They only let you out a few hours a day. Of course, it's easy to unlock the doors from the inside. Everybody does it. Only Lyle is dumb enough to do it when Harrison and Jill are around. So, <laughs> come on, let's jog. Well, all right. <sighs> Taxi! Taxi! Uh, Max, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but I don't think there's a cab within miles of this place. I'm not calling a taxi. I'm calling taxi. You mean that weird-looking dog coming towards us? Yeah, that's the one. Nobody knows for sure what kind of dog taxi is. I don't think he knows himself, but he's a good mutt. Uh, uh, hi, Max. Oh, hi, Taxi. How you doing? Uh, taxi, I'd like you to meet Harold. Uh, how, how are you feeling today, Max? Not bad. Not bad. Uh, taxi, I said I want you to meet Harold. You're, you're really feeling all right, Max. Sure, sure. Uh, taxi, this is Harold. 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 Now, where have I heard that name before? Uh, pleased to meet you, Harold. Hello, Taxi, Max, do you think we could stop now? Oh, sure, Harold. Let's uh, head over to the old water cooler. That was some fight you and Louise had last night, Max. <laughs> Louise was pretty worked up, all right. Yeah. Just because Georgette and I said hello a few times... She thinks we're going to run off together. As if we could get out of here if we wanted to. yoo We were joined by a tiny white French poodle. She smelled of honeysuckle and magnolias. She also smelled of trouble. Hello, Georgia. Good morning, Max. How are you doing after that terrible fight? I just felt so awful, awful bad about it. I couldn't sleep a wink all night worrying about you. Oh. Oh, shucks. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Oh, that's silly. What is? Thanking me for caring about you. Oh, shucks. Ha! Huh. Louise. Oh, shucks, is Monsieur Max. I come over here to tell you I am, how you say, sorry we had our little fight. And what do I hear? Aw, oh, shucks. Well, mon ami, if you think you can have your Louise and your mademoiselle, aw, oh, shucks, too, you are sadly misshapen. I think Louise meant to say mistaken, but she was so overwrought at this point, it was understandable that the word came out wrong. She turned and left in a huff. Just as she was about to reach her bungalow, Lyle, the cat we had met the night before, pounced on her back. Palms away! What are you doing, you crazy cat? Get off me this instant! Into me, compact! Into me, compact! Stand by! Mayday! Mayday! Now you listen to me, you nutty Lyle, you. We know all about you here. Do you think we are playing the fools? You have been driving us all... What is it? Ah, yes, pineapples. I uh, think she means bananas. But I, for one, have had enough. Do you understand me, Monsieur Lyle? Enough pineapples you have driven me. You will not make me into a fruit salad, n'est-ce pas? 
Now, get off my back. No one talks to me that way and gets away with it. You are not frightening me, Monsieur Bombs Away. You haven't seen the last of me, sister. Just watch out. Hey, what's going on in here? What's all this noise? What is it, Harrison? I don't know. Must be the thunder scared them. Hey, you'd better take that bag of garbage out front. Right. Whoops! Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy oat. You spilled the whole thing. Well, you don't have to stand there insulting me. You can help me clean it up. Right, right. Come on, let's get back to work. Now keep it down in here, you guys. Harrison and Jill cleaned up the spilled garbage and left. I noticed that Max and Georgette had wandered off together. Taxi noticed them, too. Huh, a fine thing, he said, and he walked away. Suddenly, I found myself alone. A light rain began to fall. As I turned my head back to my bungalow, I tripped. Looking down, I discovered that what had crossed my path were two long, low dogs, the likes of which I'd never seen before. Please forgive me for tripping over you. Not at all, not at all. Indeed, it was our fault. For walking in your way. We weren't watching. Where we were going. Um, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Harold. Hello, Harold. I'm Howard. And... I'm Heather. We're out for a stroll. We do like a stroll. Of course, Heather here isn't up to... Now, now, now. No need to go into all that, is there, dear? Sorry about all that noise last night, Harold. Noise? What noise? Oh, you know. All that... <coughs> oh, that noise. We just can't seem to... Help it, really. Come, dear. Goodbye, Harold. Oh, we will talk again, I'm sure. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Moments later, I found Chester sitting outside his bungalow. Chester, Chester, guess what? I just met these two strange dogs who said they were sorry about all the noise last night. Do you suppose... I don't suppose, Harold. I know. You do? What do you know? That Howard and Heather... The two strange dogs you met are werewolves. Oh, Chester. <laughs> I don't think those two are werewolves. If you ask me, they look more like sausages with legs. Dachshunds. Gesundheit. I didn't sneeze, Harold. Oh, but you said... Dachshunds. Gesundheit. Howard and Heather are not sausages. They are a type of dog called a dachshund. Wire-haired dachshunds, in fact. But you said they were werewolves. It is my belief that they are a cross between a wire-haired dachshund and a werewolf. A vile and dangerous combination. Oh. You don't believe me, do you? Well, you may ignore my warning if you choose to, but Howard and Heather are definitely to be watched. If you ask me, Lyle is the one to watch. Now there's a basket case. I'd say all the guests in this establishment deserve our careful attention. There is an undercurrent of tension here, Harold. An undercurrent that will one day erupt with a sudden and terrible force. The storm gathers. The rain really began to come down there and Chester and I went inside our bungalows to nap. We must have slept away most of the day because when we awoke to the sound of thunder, it was dark outside. What's going on, Chester? Beats me. Max, Max, what are you barking about? They're late with our dinners! Just then, the door of the office swung open and Jill and Harrison rushed out carrying our dinners. I can't understand how we let this happen. We've never been late before. Oh, you poor things. You must be starving. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was so relieved to get my dinner, I hardly noticed that I'd gotten soaked by the storm. 
I was glad, though, when Jill suddenly showed up at the door of my bungalow with a big white towel in her hands. Sorry to have to interrupt you, Harold, but let me dry you off so you can enjoy the rest of your meal. I don't know where my head is these days. I completely forgot about feeding all of you tonight. And then we raced out here so fast, I left the towels inside and let the door lock behind me. Jill, I finished drying the rest of them. I'm going back in. Okay, I'll be right there. Good night, Harold. Get a good night's sleep. I tried to get a good night's sleep, but the raging storm and determined howling of Howard and Heather kept startling me awake. And then I started thinking about what Chester had said earlier. Something about an undercurrent of tension that would one day erupt with a terrible force. Little did I imagine then, tossing and turning in my sleep, that the terrible eruption he had predicted had already occurred. He's gone! The next morning, I awoke with a start to the sound of Harrison's voice. She's gone! What is it, Harrison? What's the matter? It's Louise. She's disappeared, Jill. See, her bungalow's empty. And the door's wide open. How do you suppose it happened? Look, the gate. It's open, too. There's no way any of the animals could open that lock. <gasps> Somebody must have... Oh, no! Harrison, I... What is it? I... I did it. You did what? I left the gate open. Don't you remember? When I ran in to get the towels last night, I accidentally let the office door lock behind me, so I had to go back by the gate. I was in such a hurry, and it was raining so badly. I guess I just didn't notice. I... Oh, I feel terrible. It's all my fault. Poor Louise. Oh, don't worry. We'll find her. What if we don't? Then she'll find us. She'll come back sooner or later. I... I guess so. Personally, I was convinced that when Louise had seen the open gate, she had seized the opportunity to run off and teach Max a lesson. After all, she'd really been upset by his flirting with Georgette. Chester, however, had a different theory which he shared with me later that day after we'd been let out of our bungalows. There's been foul play, Harold. What makes you say so, Chester? I've been doing a little detective work. That's what makes me say so. Follow me. You'll have your proof soon enough. Where are we going? You'll see. Well, Harold, there it is. There what is? Your proof. All I see is Louise's empty bungalow. <laughs> Just think. Last night she was here. Today she's gone. Yes, that's exactly the word. Gone. Run away. But she'll be back soon. Nonsense. She didn't run away. And she won't be back. No one comes back from murder. Murder? Look at the evidence, Harold. What evidence? Look into her bungalow. What do you see? A rug, a water dish, a food dish, just like mine. Ah, but it isn't just like yours, Harold. That's the key. The rug. Don't you see how jumbled up it is? A real mess, in fact. And the food dish? Almost filled with food. And now, perhaps most significant of all, the water dish. Look around it. Water, water everywhere. So? Signs of a struggle, old boy. My conclusion. That is only a guess at this point, is that someone pushed Louise's head into the water and held it there while she was drinking. She resisted, which accounts for the spilled water and wrinkled rug. And the food? She never finished her dinner. She was, oh, shall we say, interrupted. Drowned in her own water dish. Exactly. Gee. Who do you think did it, Chester? When you think about it, the murderer could be anyone here. Anyone? Come on now. We have some investigating to do. What are you talking about? It's pouring. I noticed. But I also noticed that Max and Georgette just went into Max's bungalow. Something's up with those two, and I want to find out what it is. Let's go. Can you hear anything, Chester? Shh! I can just 
make it out. We have to stick together, Maxie, and everything will be all right. But what if we're caught? That's why we have to be very careful when the company gets dark. First, we have to find the way out, and then... I'm getting out of here, Chester. I'm soaking wet. I'll meet you back at the bungalow. Right! Well, Chester, I guess that proves that Max and Georgette are the guilty ones. Wow! They murdered Louise, and now they're planning their getaway. Not so fast there, Harold. It doesn't look good for them, it's true, but I'm still not convinced they did it. You're not? Not at all. They're not the only ones with a motive. And there's still a big piece of the puzzle that doesn't fit. If anyone had walked across the compound last night, much less dragged a body across it, I would have known. I mean, with Howard and Heather howling the way they did, who could sleep? I know what you mean. But I didn't hear or see anything all night long. Doesn't that seem odd? Maybe whoever did it didn't want to get wet, so they waited for the rain to let up. That's it! What? The last piece of the puzzle. It just fell into place. Louise was murdered. I don't know why, and I don't completely understand how, but I know who did it. Without a doubt, I know who did it. You know who did what? Chester and I turned to see Taxi, Lyle, Georgette, and Max gathered at the door of the bungalow. He's a troublemaker, that's what he is. String him up, let's string him up. Calm down, Lyle. I can't believe you think Louise was murdered. I think it because it's true. Not only that, I know who did it. Just a little more information and I'll prove my case. <laughs> that's right, Max, my yeah. friend. Laugh. Laugh today, for tomorrow you'll know the truth. And then, perhaps, you'll never laugh again. <laughs> Later that night, we were alone. I tried to tell Chester what a foolish and dangerous thing I felt he'd done, letting the others know what he had been thinking. But he was so lost in thought, he paid no attention to me. It was around midnight when he spoke again. A word of warning, Harold. Keep awake tonight. The murderer may strike again. And remember, do not sleep. If you do, How it chills me to recall those words, particularly when I think of them as Chester's last. <laughs> I should have known something was wrong when tears fell on my breakfast. I looked up and saw that Jill was crying. After I heard her move past Chester's bungalow, I called out, Chester, Chester. There was only silence. Chester, why is Jill crying? Answer me, will you? What's the matter? Tat got your tongue? <laughs> no response. I knew it was risky but I had to find out why Chester wasn't talking to me. I pushed up the latch to my door with my nose and cautiously crept over to Chester's bungalow. It was empty. I didn't know what to think. I stood there, useless as a fire hydrant in a town without dogs, and felt the tears welling up in my eyes. Oh, Chester! Why didn't I listen to you? You told me to stay awake all night, and I didn't. I was so tired, I fell asleep right away. And then this happened. It's all my fault. I turned my head away and saw them. Max, Georgette, Lyle, Taxi, Heather, and Howard. Their noses pressed against the fronts of their bungalows watching me. They stared at me now much as they stared at Chester the night before. 
accusing him of... Of what? Of knowing too much, I realized. Yes, Chester had paid a price for his curiosity and for his big mouth. The sound of Jill's crying coming from within the office gave me a new thought. Perhaps Chester was sick, and they'd taken him indoors. I crossed the compound and listened in through the open window to Harrison and Jill. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Neither can I. But it's the only explanation. It just doesn't make any sense. Sometimes life is like that. Sometimes life just doesn't make sense. We're not talking about life, Harrison. We're talking about... Yes, I know. It's my fault. I know it. You've got to stop talking like that, Jill. These things happen, that's all. Maybe, but I was the one who cleaned out that part of the storage shed. I remember carrying that stuff out to the street for pickup. I just don't understand how it got inside the compound. Well, well <clears throat> what? Uh, it's just that when you came inside the compound... You were carrying that bag of garbage, remember? When the dogs were barking, yes, and I spilled it. But how could it have gotten into Chester's food? Just tell me that. I don't know. All I do know is that I found the container near his bungalow, and when I tested his food... Poison. Poison. And now he's... Gone. Yes. I'd heard enough. I dropped down from the windowsill and stumbled back to my bungalow. Everyone may have been watching me still, but I didn't notice. All I knew was that my best friend in the whole world was gone, poisoned, and all because he knew too much. Back inside my bungalow, I curled up as tight as I could and fell into a deep sleep. Much later that day, I awakened to the sight and sounds of animals at play. It had turned bright and sunny, and now the guests of Chateau Bow Wow were disporting themselves happily in the compound before me. For one brief moment, I wanted to run out and join them. And then I remembered Chester. Someone out there, some seemingly innocent frolicker, was in reality a cold-blooded killer. Who could it be, I wondered. Who could it be? At that moment, I decided to take matters in my own paws, so to speak, and conduct a little investigation. I left my bungalow and found Taxi playing tug-of-war with a rag. How you doing, Taxi? Oh, hello, Harold. Some storm we've been having, eh? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. What? Fine, thanks. You asked how I'm doing, and I'm telling you I'm fine. Oh. Yes, I see. <clears throat> now then, Taxi, I'd like to know your whereabouts last night. My what, Harold? Your whereabouts. Where were you last night? In my bungalow, of course, just like everyone else. The truth now, Taxi. Tell me the truth. Okay. That's better. I was in my bungalow just like everyone else. You said that already. I know. Why are you telling me the same story? Because it's true. And you asked me to tell you the truth, didn't you? Well, yes. Yes, I did. By the way, Harold... I'm really sorry about Chester. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Taxi. Want to play Rip the Rag? No, thanks. Maybe another time. Okay. Not feeling terribly encouraged by the results of my investigation thus far, I was all set to give up and go home when I noticed Howard digging a hole alongside the fence near his bungalow. It seemed to me there was something suspicious going on. I went over at once. Looking for something, Howard? Oh, uh, hello, Harold. 
No, no, I was just... Getting some exercise, isn't that right, dear? Oh, yes, yes. Exercise, that's it. I see. <clears throat> I don't suppose you two would care to tell me where you were last night, would you? No, Harold, I can't say that we would. Oh? Actually, Harold, we're not much in the mood for... Conversation right now, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. Another time, perhaps. Yes, yes. Another time. Yoo-hoo, Harold! Hello there, Harold, old chap! Max and Georgette. Just who I wanted to talk to. They were my prime suspects, after all. Clearly, a direct approach would not work with them. No, I would have to be subtle, crafty, sly. Hello, Max. Hello, Georgette. Beautiful day, isn't it? Right you are, Harold. Well, speaking of what a beautiful day it is, last <laughs> night certainly wasn't. So where were you? What? Beg pardon, Harold? Dinner time. Come on, you guys. Back to your bungalows. Rats. Just when I had them on the ropes. Well, Harold, it's been swell chewing the fat with you, but we've got to run... Chow time. You know what I mean. A likely story. Harold, whatever are you talking about? Oh, I think we all know what I'm talking about. Don't we now? No. Just remember, if you have anything to get off your chests, you know where to reach me. Sure, mate. Whatever you say. Good. Just so we know where we stand. What is he talking about, Max? I don't have a clue. Poor fellow seems to be suffering from the strain. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, Harold! Aha! A confession at last. We're really sorry about what happened to Chester. Save it for the judge, sister. Uh, thanks, Georgette. Thanks a lot. Naturally, such brilliant detective work had left me famished. I returned to my bungalow and wolfed down my dinner. It was then that I noticed the writing on the bottom of my food dish. Hello. How's your tummy now? Well, isn't that cute? Too bad the letters are so smudged. That hello almost looks like help, and howls like howls. Say, what if these smudges were made deliberately? Let's see. The Y is crossed out, and it looks like they've tried to make the R into a T, and tummy is crossed out completely. Hmm, yes. It definitely reads differently if I look at it that way. Hello, how's your tummy now? Becomes help, how's out now? Gee, I wonder what it means. It was useless trying to sleep that night. Besides the storm and the endless howling, I couldn't get the message of the food dish out of my mind. Help howls out now. Somebody was trying to tell me something. I was sure of it. But what? What? Suddenly, a flash of lightning revealed two figures scurrying across the compound. Howard and Heather, I thought. That's it. It was Howard and Heather who had poisoned Chester. I threw open my door and raced out into the compound. Harold! Harold! Is that you? What's going on? They're on the loose, taxi. Look, their bungalows are empty. I knew it. I just knew it. What are you talking about, Harold? Who's on the loose? Howard and Heather. We've got to find them before they strike again. Have you seen them? Have I seen them? It seems like I've seen everybody tonight. Who else have you seen? 
Well, Max and Georgette... Ma Max and Georgette! Come on, taxi, follow me. We're too late. Their bungalows are empty, too. Don't you see what this means? Everybody's trying to skip out without paying the bill? It means that Howard and Heather are the murderers. Maybe they've even killed Max and Georgette. Chester was right. They are werewolves. Werewolves gone berserk. I saw that movie. There are three of us left, Taxi. You, me, and Lyle. Three out of nine who started this week at Chateau Bawa. You know something, Harold. What, Taxi? I sure will be glad to get back home. So will I, Taxi. So will I. They're gone! Who was that? Harold! Taxi! And that... Harold! That voice. It's so familiar. Could it be? Could it possibly be? What's the matter with you, Harold? I've been calling you and calling you! Chester! You're alive! I always said you were perceptive, Harold. But what about... I'll explain later. There isn't time now. It's Howard and Heather, isn't it, Chester? It's been them all along. Yes, Harold. Now, let's go get Lyle. He's asleep in his bungalow. What do we want Lyle for? We'll need everybody we can get. Keep low to the ground and don't let Harrison see you. Harrison? Is he here? But it's the middle of the night. Say, Chester, was it Harrison who said, they're gone just now? You got it. Psst, Lyle, wake up. Oh, yeah. Think you're a tough guy, huh? Come on, Lyle, snap out of it. <laughs> I have a secret mission for you. Follow me. Aye, aye, Captain. All right, let's go. But why can't we let Harrison... Keep your voice down. Why can't we let Harrison see us? And what's he doing here anyway? Howard and Heather are somewhere nearby. We have to get to them before it's too late. What should we do? Just wait. For what, my captain? For a sound that will tell us. That's it! It's happened! What's happened? What are you talking? Shh. I know where they are now. Let's go! I've got you now, you little devils! It's Harrison. Keep back! I don't want him to see us. Not yet. He's got a flashlight. He's shining it this way. He's... He sees us! Chester! How did you... Never mind. I'll deal with you later. Right now, I've got other things to attend to. At that point, Harrison began pulling at a loose plank in the fence near Howard's bungalow. I noticed that it was right by the hole Howard had been digging earlier that day. Suddenly, the plank was free. Harrison let it drop to the ground, and then he shined his flashlight through the opening in the fence. I could barely believe my eyes when I saw what appeared on the other side. There, inside the storage shed, their eyes gleaming in panic at the sudden intrusion were Howard and Heather. And by Heather's side were huddled five or six squirming newborn puppies. It was their crying that we'd heard. <laughs> Sorry, Howard, old boy, but you're going to have to come with me. Jump them! But, Chester, I don't understand. I thought it was Howard and Heather we were after. They're not the culprits, don't you see? Harrison's the one, and it's Howard and Heather he's been after the whole time. I don't get it. No time to explain now, Harold. Taxi, go for his ankles. Wild, follow me. Where are we going? We're going to jump him. Harold, start barking. Oh, Chester, you know how I hate the sound of barking. Bark! Well, all right. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Hey, hey get off of me, you crazy cats! Ouch, ouch, taxi! Let, let go of my ankle! What's with you guys all of a sudden? <laughs> Isn't this fun, Harold? Break his thumbs. We'll show him a thing or two. Hey, hey, let go! Ow, ow! Okay, Harrison, hold it right there. 
Dr. Greenbrier, Jill, Chester, look who's with them. Max, Georgette, and Louise. Oh, Harrison, how could you? I only hope, Harrison, for your sake as well as theirs, that no harm has come to any of these animals. When I think of how I trusted you... And I let you tell me what to do. How did you... How did you... Oh, I knew you were up to something after I called you tonight, Harrison. You were so strange on the phone. And then on the way over here, we passed your house and found Max and Georgette barking outside your window. And Louise inside. I don't know what's going on, Harrison, but you and I have to talk. I just can't believe you do such a thing. Was this how you were going to make million dollars, Harrison? By lying and kidnapping, and on top of everything, making it all look like it was my fault. Well, don't you have anything to say for yourself? You can't blame a person for trying. The next morning was warm and sunny. The storm at last was over. I had tried to get Chester to explain everything to me the night before. But he was so tired, he'd gone right to sleep. Now, the moment we were let out of our bungalows to exercise, everyone gathered around Chester and insisted that he tell us the story of what had happened. It was something you said, Harold. It made me realize Harrison was the culprit. Something I said? Yes. It was after Louise had disappeared. You said that whoever did it probably didn't want to get wet. That made me think of the towels Harrison and Jill had used to dry us off. So? So, I realized that Harrison had wrapped Louise in a towel while she was eating dinner and had taken her inside with him. He made sure that her door and the gate were left open so that it would seem as if she'd escaped. And then he made it look like it was all Jill's fault. But why? Why did he kidnap Louise in the first place? Harrison was in a big rush to make a lot of money. He'd overheard Dr. Greenbrier refer to someone here as valuable. But he didn't know which of us it was. Because Louise looks like a pretty high class... Oh, thank you! But he took a chance and stole her. He took her to his home and kept her locked up there. There was nothing to do but watch television and eat leftover Chinese food. And Kel Dump House and lives in. It was simply abdominal. Well, anyway, he soon realized he'd made a mistake. Louise, he found out, wasn't even a purebred. So he struck again. He remembered Dr. Greenbrier saying to the Monroes that I was a special cat. So he decided that I was the valuable one. He slipped some kind of sleeping powder into my food and... But he told Jill you'd been poisoned. That's right. Again, he made it look like Jill's fault. He remembered that Jill had spilled some garbage inside the compound. He was able to use that later when he told her he'd found a container of rat poison near my bungalow. Just as he wanted her to, she believed she dropped it and that her carelessness had resulted in my death. Wow. But when did he figure out that it was Howard and Heather he was after? Last night. He'd come back to the office to look through the files, determined to figure out who the valuable animals were. He was looking through Heather's file when the phone rang. It was Jill. She had tried him at home, then at the office, to remind him that Heather was pregnant, that, in fact, she was going to give birth soon. Sure, said Harrison. I know that. But then she said something that stopped him dead in his tracks. Valuable, he said. Of course I know they're valuable. I'll take care of them. When he got off the phone, he started jumping up and down. I'll take care of them, all right, he shouted. All those little puppies, I'll sell them off and make a fortune. And he ran out the door. How did you learn all this, Chester? Oh, Harrison kept me around the office with him once he'd gotten Jill out of the way. I really played up to him, purred a lot, rubbed up against him. You know, all the kind of cat stuff people can't resist. Once he started talking, he spilled the works. Uh, So where was I? Oh, yes. He was in such a rush to leave, he left the door open, and I ran out behind him. And that's when you found Taxi and me. Right. And the message in my food dish, that was from you? Very 
good, Harold. I had tried to escape earlier, but Harrison had caught me before I could manage it. That's when I had the inspiration to scratch out the message. I could only hope you'd be having one of your rare fits of intelligence when you ate dinner that night. Just one last question. If Max and Georgette didn't murder Louise, why had they been planning to run away? And why did they? Silly, Harold. We were planning to go look for Louise and bring her back. Poor Maxie was just convinced she'd run away because of him. And I guess that was all my fault. I'm just a terrible flirt. But I knew all along that Max's heart belonged to Louise. And now Louise and Georgette have made up and everybody's happy. Still, it must have been pretty tough for you, Chester, being drugged and kidnapped and all. Oh, I've been through tougher. Speak for yourself, Chester. For me, it was a nightmare. I shall always forget my days and nights at the Chateau Bow Wow. How my heart it will ache when I am thinking of everything that has happened here. But, alors, in the end, everything is fine, and we will all live happily ever. Oh, what is the word? After. Thank you, Camille. It's your... Oh, shucks. You're welcome, sugar. <laughs> In the days that followed, a calm fell over Chateau Bow Wow. Howard and Heather delighted in showing off their new family. And Lyle dropped in every now and again to say Stop hello. Me, Lyle, you nutty cat. Get off One day we learned that Harrison had been taken to the juvenile court and sentenced to four years of college. The judge thought maybe he needed to grow up a little. And I think he was right. And then at last... It was time to go home. For Chester, it wasn't a minute too soon. This place is a loony bin, Harold. I don't know how much longer my nerves can take Lyle and Louise and Taxi and those crazy werewolves. Wait a minute, Chester. Do you still believe Howard and Heather are werewolves? They probably acted strangely because they were nervous about having their babies. Werewolves can't get nervous about having babies? I must admit, that never occurred to me. Besides, just listen to that. If that isn't the call of a werewolf, nothing is. Harold, all I want is to go home, where I'll never have to listen to that terrible sound again. Just then, the gate flew open, and Toby and Pete bounded into Chateau Bow Wow. Harold, Chester, hey, you guys, we're back. You see, Chester, you're getting your wish. We're going home. Boy, is it good to see you, Harold. You too, Chester. We had such a neat vacation. Yeah, Dad lost our traveling yeah, yeah, and we had a flat tire, and Dad had forgotten to put the spare back in the car before we left, so we had to sit in the rain till the tow truck came. And then we were on this picnic, and Dad fell out of a tree, and now he's wearing yeah, this Yeah, yes, yeah, real neat, Harold. I wrote my name on it, everything. Me too. Anyway, it's too bad you guys had to be stuck here the whole time. I bet it was real dull. Chester and I just looked at each other. We said our goodbyes quickly, following Toby and Pete out the gate and never looked back. Mr. and Mrs. Monroe were waiting out front. Mr. Monroe waved his good arm in our direction. I noticed that Mrs. Monroe was holding something small in her arms. We have a surprise for you. Did you tell them, Toby? No, we wanted them to see for themselves. Hey, look, guys. I looked up and saw that what Mrs. Monroe was holding was a little brown puppy. Chester's eyes went wild. Hey, guess what, you guys? There were puppies born here a few days ago, and one of them was the run of the litter. Yeah, and we're getting to keep him. Of course... He has to stay with his mom for a while, but then we get to bring him home to live with us. And I got to name it. Yeah, but it's a good name anyway. See, the puppy's father's name is Howard, so I named the puppy Howie. Did you hear that? Wasn't that neat? Yeah, neat. I turned to Chester and commented, Before you know it, he's going to sound just like his mom and dad. But Chester didn't hear me. He would fainted dead away. It's fall now, and I'm glad to be home. 
Fall means long walks in the woods with Mr. Monroe and Pete. Late night snacks of roasted chestnuts and pumpkin pie with Toby and rolling in the leaves with Howie. Oh, yes, Howie is living with us now. That's him now. Oh. And that's Chester. Between Chateau Bow Wow and Howie, Chester felt the need to take up meditation. I guess I can understand why. Well, I've got to go now. Our week at Chateau Bow Wow was quite an adventure. And as Mr. Monroe said, adventures are good for the soul. Still, when all is said and done, there's no place like... Oh!